Okay? So imagine you have two wires and they're coming in and out of the board and uh, they're assumed to be pretty long in this direction. And their distance between each other is uh, short compared to their length. So I can give the wires any kind of current I want. I can say this one has a current coming out of the board, 1.2 amps. And then this one has a current. I could make the current opposite if I want. I could say that's uh, uh, 0.8 amps. Then I can, based on this situation, I can give several different questions. Um, oh, I have to give the positions of these as well. Let's say this is negative 3, 0. And then this one is at the position 2, 0 on the coordinate axis. This is, let's say, meters. This is meters. Right? And let's say their length along the z direction, let's say, is 100 meters. So they'll make them long enough to where we could use uh, that formula. So uh, their length L for both is 100 meters. So I can now ask A, what is the force between them? B, I can say, where can I put a third wire along the x-axis so that it experiences no force? And then C, what is the total magnetic field they create What is the force on a wire placed at that point, which has a current of 1.5 amps into board? So the C was, what is the total B field they create at the point 3, 4 meters? C, D, what is the force on the wire placed at that point, which has a current of 1.5 as into board? And we'll also assume that wire is 100 meters long. And that's it, basically, right there. Now, if you, if you recall, we did a very, very similar question to this in uh, the first week of school, the very, very first week, for electric fields and magnetic, uh, for electric fields and electric forces. We had a problem, I don't remember the exact numbers now, of course, but we had a problem like I gave you some charge, uh, let's say two coulombs, negative four coulombs or whatever, and then I said, what's the force between them? Where can I put a third charge so it experiences no force? And then, uh, then we took an arbitrary point, and uh, we said, what's the total electric field created there? Um, 
Oh, and then we said, what if there's another charge there? Let's say five coulombs. What's the total force on that uh, uh, charge? Now, for the case of electric, for the case of electricity, if I ask you what's the total electric field there, it's almost the same thing as asking what is the total force on that charge, right? Because whatever the electric field is, let's say the electric field is like this, right? What, what's going to be the force on that charge? Well, it's just going to be Q times E, so the force is also going to be like that. Same direction, the only dif difference is you just multiply its charge by the electric field. For the, so for the case of electricity, asking what is the to total E field and, what it, and asking what is the total force are equivalent, more or less. Same technique, nothing else different about it, just you just multiply by the charge. But in the case of magnetism, what is the total B there? Then once we get that, it's, uh, you still have to do some work to get the force on it, right? So there are two distinct questions. <clears throat> OK, so let's start from the beginning. The first one is going to be easy, of course. Uh, what's the force between them? We can use the equation that I just wrote at the beginning of the class. Mu0 I1 I2 L over 2 pi d. So remember, mu0 is the magnetic permeability of uh, empty space. The current, you put 1.2 times uh, 0.8 times the length is 100 meters, divided by 2 pi. And then the distance between them would be uh, 5 meters, right? So notice the distance between them is much smaller than their length. But these are like long wires that are carrying current. So as a matter of fact, this could be like the wires that bring electricity to our homes, you know, the long electrical wires. They could be five meters apart, but they're still going to attract each other or repel each other. Okay? But we don't really see that force because they're actually hanging from two supports. So we don't really see them doing this, you know. Well, we'll find what is the magnitude here, see if it's noticeable. Is this noticeable or not? Well, pi cancels pi. Two cancels uh, goes into four twice. And then... Uh, it's still going to be a pretty small number, I think. Three point eight four micronewton. That's small, huh? So, you see, it's not noticeable. So all those wires that you have, the electrical wires, they're, they're actually attracting each other or they're repelling each other, depending. Now, in this case, are they attracting each other or repelling each other? Well, they're carrying current in opposite directions. Opposites repel when it comes to magnetism, OK? So remember how we tested that? Well, let's practice it again. Let's make sure we, can, we know how to do that. The magnetic field created by this at that position is what? Let's do it here on the side. The magnetic field created by this. Take your thumb out, out of the board, and go like that. So the magnetic field created by this is going to go around it like a circle. So at that position, the magnetic field is going to be up. And then, to find the force on this, due to that magnetic field, put your four fingers towards the board inside the currents going there, and then go up like that. And then the force is this way. So to, if you test it, it comes out like that. And then this one, put your thumb towards, and then go around. So the field is going to go around like this, and then it's going to be like this. Okay, and then go, uh, this one goes out of the board. So out of the board, and then up. So the force is like that. So they uh, uh, repel each other, opposites. Okay, part B. Where can I put a third wire so it experiences no force? Remember, we asked a similar question for electricity. Does it depend on the direction of the current of that third wire? 
Volto.